Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono-white flyers deck featuring Sephara, Sky's Blade as our commander, the 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven legendary angel with flying and lifelink, since other creatures we control with flying have indestructible, and we can even cheat her into play by paying a single white mana and tapping 4 untapped creatures we control with flying instead. So our deck is going to be filled with cheap flying creatures, so we can quickly cheat out our commander and protect our team. So let's take a look at those creatures, starting out at 0 mana with Ornithopter. Then at 1 mana we've got a whole host of 1 powered flyers, including Battlefield Raptor with First Strike, Duskborn Sky Marcher, Fairy Guide Mother we can use the Adventure first to pump up one of our creatures, Healer's Hawk with Lifelink, Kaisel Cleric we can kick to tap 2 creatures down, Loyal Pegasus a 2-1 that cannot attack or block alone, Ranger's Hawk can venture into the dungeon, we've got Rustwing Falcon, Segovian Angel with Vigilance which is also very useful as we can attack with it and still use it to cast our commander, then Selfless Savior one of the few non-flying creatures in the deck as we can sacrifice it to give one of our creatures indestructible so it can save our commander commander, and then Hope of Girapur, a 1-1 flyer that when it deals combat damage to the opponent, we can sacrifice it if we want, and then they won't be able to cast non-creature spells in their next turn. Then at 2 mana we've got Angel of Unity as one of the new alchemy cards that can potentially pump up one of our party creatures. Then we've got Angelic Page which can tap to give an attacking or blocking creature plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Clarion Spirit can generate 1-1 one, one spirit tokens with flying whenever we cast our second spell each turn. Fearless Fletchling picks up plus 1 plus 1 counters with landfall and gains flying until end of turn. Then both Hushbringer and Strict Proctor can punish enter the battlefield abilities on creatures, and we've got very few of those ourselves. Remorseful Cleric, a 2-1 flyer that can be sacrificed to exile a graveyard. Youthful Valkyrie grows with the number of angels that enter the battlefield, and of course our commander is also an angel that can grow the Youthful Valkyrie. Silver B Griffin, just a 2-2 flyer, and then Tomic, a 2-3 flyer that can also punish some land strategies, and Ornithopter of Paradise can tap for mana, and can also be used to cheat out our commander. Then at 3 mana we've got Angel of the Eternal Dawn, another alchemy card that can punish ramp strategies, Archon of Amiria, another hate card that prevents people from casting more than one spell each turn, and also makes non-basics come into play tapped. Even Mind Sensor punishes people for searching their library. Elite Spellbinder can take a look at the opponent's hand and exile a card to make it more expensive. Hanged Executioner, one of the few creatures with ETB effects that will generate an extra 1-1 spirit token, so being able to make two flyers with one card makes it much easier to cast our Sephara in a timely fashion. Raidan punishes expensive non-creature spells by making them more expensive, can also be played as Protector Shield to prevent a bit of damage on our creatures. Got a Righteous Valkyrie, which can gain life when angels or clerics enter a battlefield under our control, and in the case of Brawl we need 32 or more life to give our creatures plus 2 plus 2, so great synergy with Sephara as a 7-7 seven, seven angel with lifelink. Then we've got Vryn Wingmare, making all non-creature spells cost one more, and our deck is mostly creatures anyway. We've got a Welcoming Vampire, potentially drawing extra cards when a small creature enters a battlefield under our control. Aerial Responder, a 2-3 flyer with Vigilance and Lifelink, Healer's Flock, a 3-3 flyer with Lifelink, and Resplendent Angel can also generate extra 4-4 Angel tokens if we gained 5 or more life in our turn, and of course Sephara is an excellent way to accomplish that, or we can use the 6 mana activated ability giving the Angel plus 2 plus 2 and Lifelink until end of turn. Then at 4 mana Thraben Watcher will give our non-token creatures plus 1 plus 1 and Vigilance, and Linfala, Keeper of Silence, another hate creature, preventing activated abilities on opposing creatures. Then at 5 mana, Angel of Invention, creature with Fabricate, so can enter the battlefield with 2 plus 1 counters, or generate 2 servo tokens, has a Vigilance, a Flying and Lifelink, is a 2-1 as a base stat, and gives other creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, so another nice anthem. We've got Angel of Sanctions, which can act as removal when it enters, and can also be embalmed for 6 mana out of the graveyard. Lara Dombringer, another excellent creature to combine with our other angels, giving them plus one plus one and lifelink, and of course a 5-5 five five flyer with first strike and lifelink herself. And then as a guardian savior, a 3-3 three three flyer that when it enters can return up to two target creature cards with mana value two or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, so useful way to potentially get back some creatures if our opponent did manage to cast a sweeper maybe before we got Sephara down to protect our team. And when Steel Plume Marshall attacks, it will give other attacking creatures we control with flying, plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. 
And then we also have Soul of Migration, which we can evoke for 4 mana, generating two 1-1 one, one white bird creature tokens with flying. Then taking a look at our non-creature spells, we've got God's Willing as a way to protect Sephara. Paladin class can be leveled up to eventually pump up our creatures and give one of them double strike as well, which can be quite nice with a 7-powered Sephara. Swords to Plowshares as removal. Then a 2-mana Barbed Spike is an equipment that will come into play attached to a 1-1 one, one Flying Thopter token, and then will stick around as an equipment afterwards. Gift of Estates can potentially search up 3 planes if the opponent has more lands than we do. Rally of Wings is an instant that will untap all creatures we control, and creatures we control with flying get plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, so it can be a powerful finisher. Sajiri Shelter can be a land or another way to protect Sephara. Shelter will draw a card as well as giving protection. Valor Stance can also give one of our creatures indestructible, or destroy target creature with toughness 4 or greater. Arcane Signet is still valuable ramp to have access to. And then at 3 mana, Heraldic Banner is excellent, giving all our white creatures one extra power, as well as tapping for mana. Glorious Anthem will give our team plus one plus one. Aerial Assault can destroy target tapped creature, and we gain one life for each creature we control with flying, so it can be useful in a racing situation. And then Battle Screech is also great, as it can generate two 1-1 one, one white bird creature tokens with flying, and can be flashed back without having to pay any mana, just by tapping three untapped white creatures we control, so we can often cast it and flash it back in the same turn, making four 1-1 one, one birds. And then Sarathi Benevolent, also very synergistic here, as it can plus two to give creatures we control with flying plus one plus one until end of turn. The minus three generates a 4-4 four, four white angel token with flying and vigilance, and the minus six gives us an emblem that's similar to Warship, saying if we control a creature, damage that would reduce our life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. And then Sternheim Unleashed can be foretold and cast later to generate multiple 4-4 four, four angel tokens with flying and vigilance. And then Immortal Sun will shut down all Planeswalkers, as we only have the one in our deck. We'll give our team plus one plus one, draws extra cards, and make our spells cheaper. And Emirios Call can be a land or a seven mana sorcery, making two four four angel tokens. And then non-angel creatures we control gain indestructible until our next turn. And then the mana base is pretty straightforward. 35 basic planes. We've got Cave of the Frost Dragon can turn into a 3-4 flyer until end of turn. Shafet Junes can be sacrificed to give our team plus one plus one until end of turn. And then Blink Moth Nexus can also turn into a 1 1 flyer, which can be helpful for casting our commander. So, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Nicol Bolas, a God Pharaoh, Grixis, presumably control deck. My hands. not great, not terrible. Selfless Savior can maybe protect one of my author creatures. And we're not too far from assembling four flyers. So we'll try it. And I think I'm happy with turn one savior. Make sure we protect our flyers. Clarion Spirit could be helpful if I can maybe double spell on three. Okay, Innocent Blood takes care of my savior. Gift of Estates could be very useful next turn. So this turn I could Clarion Spirits, and then next turn if I don't draw land I could go Gift into Hawk, Trigger Spirit. Which doesn't work if I play Cleric here. Elspeth's Nightmare is painful. Kills my Clarion Spirits. So, probably going to Cleric plus Hawk and kind of ignore Gift of Estates. And then they can take either Gift or Shelter. Shelter gone. So I can gift for value at least. Opponent ramping towards their 7 mana Planeswalker. Getting closer and closer. And yeah, Nicol Bolas can deal 7 damage to Sephara potentially. So that would be an answer. Lands means I'm probably going to Avon Mind Sensor. Question is whether I want to play the land or not. Probably fine to play it.
And then I'll keep the Aven at instant speed in case of a sweeper. So next turn we could see Nicol Bolas. If we draw a cheap flyer we could play Sephara. Alright, so just going to Gifts, pick up a couple lanes. And attack. Opponent can level up Midnight Clock if they want. So is it time for the God Pharaoh? It is. Greetings, knights. You they found Healer's Flock. To try so hard. Angel of Invention to pump the team is not bad. So... Could play Angel, play Sephara, or I can play Angel and attack. Probably want to pressure Nicol Bolas, although if I trade it's going to be even more difficult to get Sephara down. So let's make two servos, play Sephara. And then now an 8-8 Sephara at least doesn't die to Nicol Bolas anymore. And hopefully next turn we can make a big attack, maybe take out Nicol Bolas. Plus two finds Battlefield Raptor. And get to untap. And Tomic we can play. Alright, probably sending our entire team at Nicol Bolas and hoping they don't have instant speed removal for Sephara, otherwise we're gonna be very sad. They're not blocking Angel of Invention with Raptors, so probably no removal for Sephara. Alright. So Bola's down. Opponent camp the Healer's Flock, and they can refresh their hand here. Or they can replay Nicol Bolas. It's gonna be a Crux of Fate, killing Sephara and my Servo Tokens. And then a Midnight Clock to restock their hand. So we can attack first, send Angel and Tomic. And then play Sephara. Even Mind Sensor means they can only surge the top four with Fabled Passage, but they still found a basic. Consuming Tide, gonna bounce everything except for Sephara, I guess. And I can still flash an Avon Mind Sensor, sadly Sephara down. Okay. 
Second Angel of Invention. And play two more two drops afterwards. Seems fine. Make some servos. And then Cleric plus Proctor. Maybe stop some ETB effects. And hope there's no follow up sweeper. Dark Intimations, okay. Sacrifice my servo. Discard Healer's Hawk. So with the next Bolas they cast, they can get an extra loyalty. Get to untap. And should I make an attempt to cast Sephara? 11 mana if I want to hard cast it, so not quite. So probably fine to attack with the team, although I imagine they've got removal for Angel of Invention. So, kind of a tricky spot. Maybe I should play Sephara, although it could also get countered, even though they only have a single blue up. And their deck seems more like a tap out control deck. So I guess no harm in casting Tomic first. And see what's up. And then I could attack with everyone and hope we get there. Shark Typhoon cycled, can make a 3-3 shark, but we should still have lethal here, as I'll at least take 9 damage. Alright, sweet. So, very close game against Grixis Control. Managed to defeat the evil Nicol Bolas. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing an Extus, potentially Mardu Sacrifice deck. And yeah, our hand's pretty decent. Selfless Savior into Ornithopter of Paradise, which can help cast the rest of our hands, and hopefully we'll pick up some more cheap flyers to cast the Sephara soon. Shambling Gas could be a good answer to Selfless Savior or another one toughness creature. For now, Ornithopter, and we'll pass. So, possible our opponent's just red black and is only planning to cast Awaken the Blood Avatar. But nope, looks like Mardu. Alright, so I could double spell Youthful Valkyrie and Sky Marcher, or I could have a look with Elite Spellbinder. Double spelling makes it more likely that I can cast a Sephara next turn. Although it is tempting to have a look with a Spellbinder. So let's do that. And we see some expensive cards. Blood Mage could make a token, making it easier to cast Awaken the Blood Avatar. Murder Strider, of course, can kill a creature as well, but we've got it covered with our... Selfless Savior to an extent, so I think we take the Blood Mage here and make it two more expensive. And then they're pretty far from casting Awaken. I guess Angel of Eternal Dawn also a great answer to Awaken the Blood Avatar specifically. So we'll use the Savior here, keep our Spellbinder. Opponent still gets their creature half. And if I block, they can trade Shambling Gas by giving it minus one, minus one, so it doesn't seem worth it. Okay, so now... Am I in danger of facing Blood Avatar next turn? Not quite. So, probably fine to double spell here. And then next turn I can play Sephara for one mana. Or I might reevaluate and play Angel of Eternal Dawn anyways. 
All right, Phyrexian Towers, a very good draw for them. Can sacrifice Shambling Ghasts, take out Spellbinder, or make a treasure, which lets them cast a 6-drop here, like Liliana. So not what we wanted to see. Opponent decides to kill Spellbinder instead of casting Liliana, and gets a double vision down, although only one unknown, which could be an instant or sorcery. Probably go for Angel of Eternal Dawn, just as a safety net, which can also grow the Youthful Valkyrie. And hopefully next turn we can get Sephara down. Alright, there's a 5 mana Callous Blood Mage. Could make a token. But yeah, Awaken the Blood Avatar is going to be difficult to cast with our Angel in play. And now I could even double spell Aerial Responder plus Sephara. And if I draw a land next turn, can play Angel of Invention, pump the team. And we should be pretty close to killing our opponent. Could just see Liliana make a sacrifice to creatures, which is fine. Yep, there's Liliana. Let us march into battle and, make new comrades. and what do I get rid of? Definitely Sky Marcher. And then probably don't need the Lifelink or Responder as much. Okay, so we can take out Liliana, play an Angel of Invention too. And I'll go with the Servos. And then this goes face, this goes face, this kills Lily. Alright, hopefully we can dodge a Sweeper. And some Sweepers, of course, Sephara will protect us against. Claim the Firstborn to steal Angel of Eternal Dawn and my youthful Valkyrie. So now they could awaken the Blood Avatar, sacrificing both creatures. Although that wouldn't be enough by itself, despite being quite powerful. So yeah, there's Awaken the Blood Avatar. Can just sacrifice one of my servo tokens. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Tessa Karlov sacrifice deck. And our hand's pretty decent. Got some interaction with Source of Plowshares, a bit of ramp with Banner. Could use a few more creatures, but Hushbringer's excellent. So that can also stop dying creatures. So next turn, Banner plus maybe Swords, if they play their commander. And Hushbringer, nice answer to Perilous Mirror. Gonna eat a Spark Harvest, so still a two for one. Now probably go Banner plus Guide Mother. And then next turn we can Limvala plus Swords if they played their for mana commander. Hit for two. This might be a game where we cast Sephara for seven mana, getting pretty close. Sir Conrad to play. And we can level up Paladin class. So the race is on. Of 
Conrad hits for five. And Kaya could exile Limvala here. Limvala also stops Sir Conrad's ability for what it's worth. Alright, so as the dust settles, we've got our Sephara in play, which is a must answer threat. Fairy Guide Mother is chipping in. And a Seraph of the Scales. I have missed this animation. Can gain Death Touch until end of turn. So that does prevent Sephara from attacking. Unless we level up our Paladin class some more, which seems worth it. And then Sephara can gain Double Strike, which gets past Death Touch nicely. So Sephara's gonna get chumped. Leaving behind some 1 1 flyers. And then next turn, we can cast a big Starnheim Unleashed, so drawing a lot of lands actually worked out this game. Now, when we have a large double striking, life linking creature, we only gain life of the first strike damage if the opposing creature dies, so we didn't gain 20, but only 10. Back down to 21, and a Cavalier of Night can take out Sephara. So, pretty good play here. Down to 19, and Sajiri Shelter, a nice draw. So what's my play? I can Sternheim Unleashed. I've got 8 mana. So... Can make 3 Angels. Although that doesn't let me play Sephara, which still costs 3 mana if we tap for Flyers. But uh, making 3 Angels still seems pretty good. Or I can make 2 Angels keep up Shelter. Uh, 3 Angels seems better. Still gains double strike. Put on chumps. And I'll hang on to Sishiri Shelter. Remorse gonna take that away, fair enough. And Grasp kills one angel. So, let's see here. They've got one card in hand. If I kill their Cavalier, they could get back like a Doom Decenter or Mirror, that's fine. So probably fine to block here. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. Next turn, an attack with Paladin class is going to be more than enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Joda deck that's also playing Keruga as companion. So, a slow but probably very powerful deck if it can get Joda down. And Hushbringer doesn't really stop Joda, can stop Keruga. Hope of Girapur could prevent him from casting non creature spells. But as always, we're mostly interested in getting our Sephara down quickly, which this hand's not bad at. We just need another cheap flyer and we can get there. So I'll try it. Hushbringer, not the best combo with Angel of Invention, I suppose. But we'll still pump the team. Kick things off with our Angel. As if they have removal, I would rather save the Hope of Girapur for later. Ooh, Ornithopter was an excellent draw. So, I'm gonna keep it as a secret, but that does mean we could already cast Sephara next turn by going Hope plus Ornithopter. So we'll attack with the Angel first.
And we know our opponent can't have any two mana counter spells because of Keruga's companion. But they might have something they can cycle, or like a stomp from Bonecrusher Giant, who knows. Opponent passes. And there's a crystal. Alright, so not doing a whole lot here. Probably fine to foretell this. And then our opponent's probably casting Joda next turn, so I'll wait on sacrificing hope until maybe next turn. It's going to be an Hour of Promise for Ramp instead. Opponent is at 13, so they're very close to dead. Third land lets me make a 4-4 if I want. Now it's probably a good time to sacrifice Hope of Girapur. Prevent them from casting any big sweepers. And then I might be better off keeping up God's Willing to protect Sephara. But yeah, opponent scoops it up. Hope of Girapur seals the deal after a nice quick Sephara. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Turgrid, God of Fright, so presumably a discard-heavy deck. And having a hand I can quickly deploy is an advantage in this type of matchup. So seeing Ornithopter and Loyal Pegasus is great, Shelter for protection. But then it kind of stops there, we don't have a whole lot of follow-up. But given that we're on the draw, I think I'm willing to keep this. And hopefully we can get a quick Sephara down. And Redan is excellent. So Ornithopter even helps us attack with Loyal Pegasus, so worth it to play it out here. Otherwise I might keep it as a surprise. Pegasus gets Wither Crowned. Uh, let's see here. I don't want to sacrifice Pegasus, because it's still useful for Sephara. And then Shelter could also make the Wither Crown fall off, for what it's worth. If I play Guide Mother, next turn I could draw a 2-drop or a 1-drop to still play Sephara. Which is probably better. So we'll just play Guide Mother for 1 mana. No way out makes me discard two. Probably can give up the shelter here. Hang on to Raidan. And then play Raidan. And then next turn I should be able to play Sephara if my creatures survive. Alright. Array down, down. So we still need to draw a cheap flyer. Take the two. Now once I sacrifice Pegasus, if they have Turgrid in play, they'll gain control of Turgrid, so that would be unfortunate. And now I'm gonna main phase Avon Mind Sensor so I can still play Sephara, otherwise Playing it at instant speed would be slightly better. They could still have removal for Sephara here, so it goes. Can still replay her next turn for 3 mana. Alright, there's Turgrid. So probably don't want to sacrifice the Pegasus even though we got Sephara down. And we'll just smash. And probably want to play out my land in case they make us discard it. The Haunt of Hightower. Yeah, that's a good one. So it can double block the menacing Turgrit with her indestructible flyers. And attack. So we'll just send Sephara, and then we can discourage the Haunt from attacking. 
Also, attacking into a 3-3 lifelinker wouldn't really accomplish much. Opponent draws with Castle. That's a pricey activation, so they're pretty desperate here. Haunt attacks. So I would get punished if I blocked and they had instant speed removal for Sephara, but they don't, and our opponent concedes. Sweet, so yeah, the loyal Pegasus that could ended up being very important despite not dealing any damage. Sweet, so we got to see our Mono White Flyers deck in action. Got some very quick Sephiras down, mostly thanks to the many one drops and Ornithopter as well. But sometimes we can also play a slightly longer game and even cast Sephara for 7 mana at times. So yeah, pretty fun streamlined white aggro deck that will get better over time as more white flyers are added to the game. So not the most difficult deck to keep up to date. But yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.